Hello, in, in this um, video we'll be looking at force time graphs and um, how they relate to um, change of momentum. Now, um, the force the force from Newton's uh, second law equals rate of change of momentum which can be written as mv minus mu divided by t, um, where v is the final velocity and u is the initial velocity of the body um, whose momentum is changing. Okay, f being the force and t being the time. Now, if we multiply across by both sides, we find that force times time equals mv minus mu. Now, force times time um, is in fact the impulse. Uh, impulse being um, a force applied for a small period of time, like a cricket ball hitting a bat or throwing a ball against a wall. It's called an impulse. Impulse is sometimes written as I. Impulse. Okay. Now, force times time, which is impulse, is also mv minus mu, which is a change in momentum. And we're now going to look at some, some graphs um, looking at um, situations in which there is um, a force acting for a period of time. And the force might not always be constant. So, this is a graph of the force in newtons against time in seconds. Now, perhaps say a force is applied to, to a body, uh, maybe for a period of time, let's say it's a constant force of 4 newtons applied to a body for say 3, three seconds. Okay, now there will be a change in momentum of the body. Okay, so and the change in momentum is equal to, remember, Ft equals change in momentum mv minus mu. So the change in momentum will in fact be the area under the graph. So that's 4 times 3, which is 12. So the change in momentum is 12. Now you can write that as newton seconds, or you can write that as 12 kilograms meters second to the minus one. They are the same units. Um, so then that's a body will change its momentum for, for, for that um, with that value if, if this graph. Okay? Now that's for a constant force for three seconds. We can also apply it to a non-constant force. For instance, we could draw something like this. Okay. And again, let's say that's up to 8 newtons, and say this is 4 seconds. So force in newtons, time in seconds. And this time, again, the change in momentum, and I'll rub this out, the change in momentum is simply the area under the graph. So. We have a triangle here and a triangle there. There, so the impulse or change in momentum, change in momentum is equal to the area under the graph, which equals well this triangle there. That's eight half the base times the height. So half the base times the height over this triangle plus half the base times the height for this triangle. So that would be a half times 2 times 8 plus a half times 2 times 8. And that gives us 16 newton seconds. So the change in momentum is 16 newton seconds, or that's the same as 16 kilograms meters second minus one. So in fact if we knew the initial velocity, say the initial velocity was naught, we can find the final velocity by looking at the change in momentum. 
Now let's look at another example. Now this example here I'm about to draw um, is modelling um, somebody running with a constant velocity. So this time we're going to have negative. So this is the force in newtons time in seconds. Now let's have a look at this. So we can draw something that looks a bit like this. Okay, now this represents somebody running, okay, with a constant velocity. And this part here of the graph, we'll call that part A, and this part, part B. So if somebody's running in this part here, as they put their foot down, that will actually give a momentum in the negative direction, which will reduce their momentum. And then in this bit here, so that is negative, and this bit here is positive, and this is where they push off again. And what we're going to find is the area A equals area B, and therefore overall the change in momentum, momentum of the system is equal to zero. If the change in momentum is zero, then you have um, there's going to be no resultant force, no acceleration, so it will give us a constant velocity. Now, say the question asks you, okay, fair enough, what is the, the average force for, um, say, so when the foot's being put down on the ground before it pushes off again? Well, to find the, the average force is somewhere here where the area above is the same as the area below. So if I draw a line there, approximately we'll find the area in this segment is supposed to be the same as the area as in this segment. And if this, for instance, uh, comes out as, um, say, minus 1, therefore the average force um, is, is minus 1 for um, the period when this is below the graph.